Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, April 11th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got the second part of Didier's ongoing series about analyzing malicious HTA files. HTA, that's HTML application. It's sort of a Microsoft thing, but really what it is, it's an archive of a web page, HTML page and JavaScript and such, essentially to sort of create self-contained uh, complete copies of an HTML5 application. But as with so many things, it can be abused maliciously, in particular the JavaScript that's loaded here. And that's sort of what Didier is going after. In the first part, he sort of showed how to take apart the HTA file. And today it's about how to analyze the script that was then actually loaded, in this case, a malicious PowerShell script. The script itself was encrypted using AES, but as so often with this kind of malware, the encryption here was really more an obfuscation in that the key was part of the file. And then, yeah, ECB mode was used for AES, which of course isn't great, but perfectly adequate, of course, if you're delivering the key with the payload anyway. Like I said, really more kind of an obfuscation here and DDA is going over how to then decrypt the payload. You also have to unzip it yet again, and then sort of how to further analyze and extract the resulting script. In the end, we get to a bat file that's being downloaded from a website. So that URL is the price of essentially decrypting and then further decoding the resulting PowerShell script. And I'm sure that he will tell us in a later episode what this particular bat file does. And on Friday, I talked about Apple releasing patches for two Saturday vulnerabilities. And well, they were initially only released for the latest versions of iOS, iPadOS and macOS. Well, Apple didn't wait long. And today we did receive uh, the updates for older versions of these operating systems. For macOS, we are getting them back to macOS 11 or Big Sur. For iOS and iPadOS, we get them back to iOS 15.7, which is now at 15.75. In case you wonder why you only get uh, an update for one vulnerability, the kernel and privilege escalation vulnerability in macOS, well, the WebKit vulnerability, that's addressed already in the update to Safari, which is a separate update for or these older operating systems. And recently, electronics company MSI suffered an attack against its network. The reason this is significant is that MSI is well known for its motherboards. And of course, these motherboards come with firmware and BIOS. And now, MSI now warns to be very careful if you're downloading any firmware or BIOS updates for its products and always to refer to the official website for uh, these updates. This may not necessarily be the MSI website. If you bought a product, a PC from some OEM that contained MSI components, you may want to go to that particular OEM in order to download respective uh, firmware because they sometimes uh, adapt uh, the official firmware to the particular versions of the product that they actually delivered. Of course, phishing and such is an issue here. So if you're getting in the next couple of weeks some kind of email that there is a critical update for an MSI product that you may or may not own, double check, uh, but you definitely always should do this. There is nothing at least publicly known about any kind of keys material or so being leaked here. But uh, this, of course, could always uh, be a potential concern if you had a network compromise like this. Now, according uh, to the intruders in this case, uh, one piece of software that was apparently uh, leaked was a framework uh, to create BIOS modules. So that could also be potentially then being abused in order to create some malicious uh, BIOS updates. 
And then an update to a story that I mentioned on Friday. On Friday, I mentioned about the update to the net logon protocol. Microsoft originally scheduled that for April 11th, but uh, because uh, this is uh, pretty close to uh, the tax filing deadline here in the US, I guess, not sure if there were other reasons that played a role here, Microsoft decided to push this back to the June patch day, which will be June 13th. And thanks to John for pointing that out. And again, a link uh, to the Microsoft announcement uh, will be in the show notes with details about the schedule of these update releases.